prison, the final frontier for some folks, and a very bad gap year for others. What happens inside those prison walls often stays within those walls, but the horrors and harsh facts do creep out from time to time. We sent our intrepid team of researchers to find out the craziest things that have happened and are happening inside prisons, and what they came back with blew our minds. Welcome to the insane world of the penitentiary. Number 50. It's a fact that anyone who goes to prison has a higher chance of dying than people on the outside. A 50% higher chance. And think about it for a second, aren't there more ways to die on the outside? Maybe, but prisoners in some lockups face mistreatment by guards and the wrath of other inmates on a daily basis. There are also the issues of poor nutrition, not great healthcare packages, stress, and depression. 49. It's well known that the USA locks up more people per capita than any other country. But did you know that in 2019, a staggering 2.3 million Americans were doing time? Over a fifth of the entire world's prison population is in the USA. 48. Some other countries also seem to enjoy putting a lot of people in prison. After the US, next on the list for most prisoners per 100,000 is El Salvador. After that country comes Turkmenistan. 47. An investigation in 2014 found that the portions of food were so small at Gordon County Jail in Calhoun, Georgia, that some prisoners resorted to eating toothpaste. 46. He's a sadist to some and a savior to others, but one thing's for sure, and that's the fact that Sheriff Joe Arpaio is proud of how little to eat he gives his prisoners in Arizona. He gleefully wrote in his biography that his 15 to 40 cent prisoner meals were the cheapest meals in America. 45. We can tell you that this one blew us away, and that's the fact that there are more jails in the US than there are colleges. 44. In 2013 in California, around 10,000 people were released early, but not for good behavior. They were let out because prisons in the state were overcrowded. But here's the punchline. Some people doing time for violent offenses came out when folks convicted of nonviolent drug offenses went in. 43. Those people serving time for nonviolent drug offenses make up about half of the US's federal prison population. Those offenses are the reason the prison population has quadrupled since the early 1980s. 42. Brazilian prisons were getting so full, the country said, enough's enough, let's come up with a way to reduce the number of people doing time. The government introduced the Redemption Through Reading program, which meant that prisoners could get up to 48 days off their sentence if they read a book. We know what you're thinking, that lots of prisoners could just cheat and skim the book. Well, that wasn't possible because each prisoner had to write a comprehensive book report. This initiative worked in two ways, because the books were giving the prisoners an education as well as an early release date. 41. An American guy named Richard Lee McNair escaped prison a whopping three times and he got pretty creative about how he did it. In 2006, he actually got into a crate and mailed himself out of prison. It didn't end well for this guy since he's now doing time in the maximum security facility ADX Florence. 40. The Aryan Brotherhood gang in the US is bloodthirsty, to say the least. At one point, they were responsible for something like 18 to 25 percent of homicides that took place inside federal prisons. This gang was founded back in 1964 by a bunch of Irish American bikers, and right now there are about 20,000 of them serving time in prisons. 39. In 1971, a guy named Joel Kaplan was sitting in cell 10 of the Santa Maria Acatitla prison in Mexico City when a helicopter noisily landed in the prison yard. The guards thought some dignitary from the government had come to visit, but Joel knew better. Some guys came out of the helicopter, collected Joel, and then flew him out of the prison. The story gets much weirder since after Joel made his way back to the USA, he claimed that what he had done was entirely legal. He said no one got hurt and even the helicopter was paid for and met FAA standards. The Mexican authorities might have disagreed with that, but they never asked for extradition. 38. Oklahoma can be proud of being the prison capital of the world. In this state, there are 1,079 prisoners for every 100,000 people. That might not mean much to you, so consider the fact that in the country of Germany, there are 78 people locked up in every 100,000. 37. Here's the very sad story about a man named Jonathan Magby. When he was just four years old, he was hit by a car, and after that he was paralyzed from the neck down. Since he couldn't use his body, a nurse had to care for him and she basically was at his side each and every day. But get this, Jonathan smoked weed now and again because that helped with his condition. The cops didn't much like that and when Jonathan was 27, he was jailed for 10 days for marijuana possession. If that's not bad enough, his carers told officials that this guy needed constant care and he needed a ventilator, which he didn't get while he was behind bars. The awful end of this story is that Jonathan died on his fourth day in jail. By serving and protecting him, they killed him. Yeah, we're guessing that you think we haven't found more insane stories than that. Well, you'd be wrong. It's gonna get worse. 36. 
There's a woman in Thailand who holds the record for being sentenced to the most time for a female criminal. Her name is Chamoy Tipiaso, and after being found guilty of ripping off thousands of ties in a pyramid scheme, she was handed down 141,078 years. Ha! Huh. You might wonder, is there any chance this woman could do the time? Well, it turns out that she only ended up serving eight of those years. 35. Here at the Infographic Show, we like nothing more than to tell you stories about the infamous Alcatraz prison, The Rock, as it was fondly known. Back in the day, when The Rock was the home of the likes of Al Capone and other criminals the US didn't want to escape, the prison had a policy to give every prisoner the availability of hot showers. Wow, you might be thinking, how humanitarian of the authorities. Well, a bleeding heart is not the reason those prisoners got hot, steamy showers. The reasoning was that if they enjoyed the hot water showers, they'd more easily freeze to death if they tried to escape and swam in the cold waters of San Francisco Bay. 34. There once was a man named Troy Leon Gregg, and he committed the heinous crime of murdering two people. He was eventually arrested for that and told that he was going to get the death penalty. Fast forward to 1980 and death row at Georgia State Prison. On a warm July night, Troy and some other guys made American history when they escaped from death row. The thing is, Troy's freedom didn't last long. One of the things he did on his first night was to go to a bar, but there he got into a fight with a biker and was beaten to death. As for those other escapees, they were all eventually caught and sent back to prison. 33. In 2019, the Netherlands was having a problem that the US hadn't experienced for a long time. That was the fact that the crime rate was so low, it had to start closing down lots of its prisons. 32. In 1992, there was a riot at Karanjiru Penitentiary in Brazil after a fight in a soccer game got out of hand. The military police were called because the 15 guards had no chance of controlling the more than 2,000 prisoners. What happened next has simply been called a massacre, and that's because those cops just started shooting anyone they saw, even if the prisoners were surrendering. This resulted in the death of 111 prisoners, and not even one injury to a cop. In 2013, for their actions that day, 23 of those cops were sentenced to a total of 156 years. 31. This is the story about an esteemed cancer doctor named Chester Milton Southam. Much of Chester's life was concerned with finding a cure for this terrible disease, but you could say this man might have skipped some of his ethics classes. That's because old Chester injected cancer cells into prisoners at Ohio Penitentiary. Did he get the prisoner's consent before he did this, you might wonder? Well, the short answer is, like hell he did. Don't worry, his ethics or lack thereof were later criticized. 30. We'll stick with this Ohio prison and tell you that in 1930, a terrible fire raged through the building, and you can only imagine the terror of that happening when you're locked in a cell. The guards didn't even unlock the doors. Those guys were so fearful of what might happen to them. There's both a happy and a sad ending to this story, because even though 322 inmates died in the fire, many more escaped after some inmates overpowered the guards and started running around opening doors. 29. We just know you're going to think we're making things up now, but we can assure you that this is 100% the truth. In Canada, they have a polar bear jail. Yeah, you heard that right. When those great beasts start causing trouble up in Churchill, Manitoba, they get sent to the polar bear holding facility. The bears do anything from 2 to 30 days behind bars, and then get relocated to the wild. If you're thinking that no bears actually serve time, then think again, because lately, the 20 cell facility had to add on another 8 cells. The polar bear crime rate has skyrocketed of late, because of what you might call poverty in their natural environment. 28. The Louisiana State Penitentiary has sometimes been called the Alcatraz of the South, and even worse, the bloodiest prison in America. Back in the day, it was a hellhole, and that's no exaggeration. At one point, one in every 10 prisoners had a stab wound, and if a knife didn't get them, the harsh work would. Things got so bad in the 1950s that 31 inmates completely slashed their Achilles tendons just to bring some attention to the injustices they were suffering. We'd like to tell you that things got better, although just recently the place has been in headlines for its corrupt guards. 27. When Hurricane Katrina happened, you'd think that prisoners in New Orleans would have been taken from their cells. That's what should have happened. But in actuality, hundreds of prisoners were left up to their necks in water in their cells without food or water. The inmates were eventually evacuated after a few days, but they let it be known that when things got bad, the correctional officers just left the facility. 26. In the 1980s, a British drug smuggler, David McMillan, almost escaped from Melbourne's high-security Pentridge prison by helicopter. But that plan didn't exactly work out for him. You just can't hold a bad man down. And years later, McMillan would find himself locked up in Thailand's notorious Klung Prim Central Prison. Things were looking bad for the smuggler, and he knew he had to get out. But how do you do that when not one person has ever escaped from that place? Well, this guy had one thing on his side, and that's the fact that he was very smart. 
he became the first man ever to escape that prison. And you know what he credits for his successful escape? An umbrella. That's right, he said later he walked off with an umbrella simply for the fact that escapees don't carry umbrellas. 25. There's a place sometimes called the most notorious medieval prison in the world, and that was the Clink. This English prison was opened in 1144, and you might say doing time there wasn't a walk in the park. Some prisoners got 24 hours a day solitary confinement and a diet that consisted of bread and water. Quite a few of them experienced that and then could look forward to being burned at the stake. 24. If you think you've seen some bad overcrowding in prisons, then you have to see the leaked security footage that came from a jail in Thailand in 2019. We can't tell you exactly how many guys are in there in that cell, but it could be something like 80 or even 100. The only way you could get more people in that cell would be if you started piling the bodies on top of each other. 23. In the 1800s, a British man was sent to Australia on a transport ship to serve time on a penal colony. There he got the name of Moondine Joe. He turned to crime again, committing robberies and then hiding out in the bush, and for that the authorities hated him. His luck ran out when he was caught, and this time the authorities made sure he wasn't going to escape. He had to serve a sentence in a nice pair of leg irons, but Moondine Joe still managed to escape. His plan now was to walk through that bushland and virtually cross Australia, but the cops once again got their man. Ok, so they had him, and this time he definitely wasn't going to escape because the warden had built a cell especially for Joe. It was basically a concrete box. So how could Joe get out of that? The local governor even said to him, if you get out again, I'll forgive you. Guess what? He got out. Joe made a hole in one of the walls and off he went into the sunset. After that, he tried not to commit any more crimes, but after a few years, he started robbing again. He was captured again, of course, but the governor was true to his word and had Joe removed from prison. 22. You could say that no one on this planet has been as adept at escaping from prison as Moondine Joe, but that's when a Japanese man named Yoshi Shiratori steps up and says, hold my beer. Shiratori is famous for four successful prison escapes. 21. Back in the 1960s, one guy whose name you saw a lot was Timothy Leary, and that's because he became kind of a guru in the hippie counterculture. Leary believed that psychedelic drugs held powers that could help mankind, and he wanted to prove it. He got his chance when he took part in something called the Concord Prison Experiment. This involved Leary giving consenting prisoners doses of psilocybin, aka magic mushrooms. The question was, would those guys who did the mushrooms quit crime when they got out of prison? The answer was that 20% of the guys who took part in the project went back to crime after prison, while 60% of the other American criminals at the time did the same. 20. When you're doing time in Iceland's Kvia Breja prison, you can enjoy rooms with exceptional views and even get out now and again to do some shopping in the market. The rooms all have internet and the guys, not the guards, have the keys to those rooms. You might also be surprised to hear that it's a diverse kind of joint with women, men, the old and the young all mixed together and helping each other do their time. 19. In the USA, around 75% of prisoners will end up back in prison within five years after their release. 18. In Norway, only around 20% of released criminals will end up back in prison. 17. Not so many people know this, but Senator John McCain actually did time behind bars. The senator was flying a plane in the Vietnam War, and that plane was shot down. He ejected out of the thing, but doing so, he broke both arms and a leg. McCain was captured and then sent to Holo Prison, aka the Hanoi Hilton. He was beaten, and you can imagine how that felt when he already had some bad injuries. He did eventually get some treatment, but after a few weeks the poor guy had lost 50 pounds. If that wasn't bad enough, he later did a two-year stretch in solitary confinement. Could it possibly get any worse, you might wonder? The answer is a resounding yes. He was interrogated a few times a week, and during those sessions he was bound and savagely beaten. The man spent five and a half years as a prisoner of war, and because of his injuries, until the day he died he still couldn't lift his arms above his head. 16. Perhaps the worst kind of prison might be one with no doors. Yes, you heard that right. A prison you're just left to die in. This is a form of punishment called immurement, and it basically involves having a cell built around you. This happened to a Moroccan serial killer in 1906. He was walled up and screamed for days on end. Since he had no water to drink, those screams didn't last long. 15. If you've ever visited the city of Phnom Penh in Cambodia, you might have walked down a quiet back street and found a former prison. It's now called the Tul Slang Genocide Museum. Before this place was a prison used by the communist Khmer Rouge during their bloody takeover of the country, it was just a school. When the soldiers of the uprising got hold of the place, they turned it into a torture and execution center and called it Security Prison 21 or S21. Walking from room to room, you see numerous torture devices and photos of all the families that were killed there. Another room is filled with their skulls. Tool Slang was a prison where people were sent to be tortured and killed. Women, children, and of course men. 
they'd been accused of, well, not being on the right side of politics. They were just your average student, teacher, doctor, engineer, soldier, sailor. We won't talk about the horrific devices they used to torture and ultimately kill them, but needless to say, imprisonment there was worse than you can imagine. Our researchers at the Infographics Show have been to this place, and we can assure a visit is absolutely heartbreaking. 14. When Alcatraz was up and running as a prison, there was a rumor that the waters around the island were full of man-eating sharks. That's not exactly the truth, but it probably prevented a few men from trying to escape. A great white has been spotted there in the past, but that was very unusual. Certain kinds of sharks might swim in that water, but not the kind that will munch down on a man. We're getting close to the top 10 now, so expect to see something special. 13. Japanese prisons are well known for being really, really strict. An American man who was sent there in the 90s said he got 10 days in solitary just because he looked up before eating. That was a big no-no, of course. 12. What you're about to hear is possibly one of the most outrageous prison stories ever. In 2017, at an Ohio prison, an investigation revealed that some very clever inmates had made two computers and hid them in the ceiling. A computer by itself wasn't very useful, but the guys connected the devices to the state's Department of Rehabilitation and Corrections network. The only reason those guys got caught was because the prison realized that daily internet usage was exceeding the threshold. The good news is that those men had obviously learned a lot in their prison electronics class. 11. What's called the most violent prison riot in American history happened in 1980 at the New Mexico State Penitentiary. In short, the prison was taken over by the prisoners, and guards and inmates were taken hostage. None of the guards were killed, but we can't say that for the captured inmates. What happened is some of the gangs that were leading the riot took over the prison. They rampaged through the cell blocks, and if they couldn't get through a door, they used a blowtorch to get through it. On the other side, there were guys who were in protective custody, and some of those people ended up being tortured, hanged, dismembered, and killed in other terrible ways. We hate to tell you this, but that blowtorch that they had was used on the faces of men deemed snitches. 33 people in the end were killed. 10. There was a special dungeon in the Tower of London called Little Ease, and the thing was, when you got sent there, you got Little Ease. That's because it was so small a person couldn't lie down. It was a tiny little box and must have driven prisoners mad. 9. In every prison, you have a guy that makes hooch. Well, you have a lot of guys that do that, and they make the alcohol drink from juice, bread, and bits of fruit, but might throw in all kinds of things. We found one guy who considered himself a hooch master when he was doing time, but one thing he got wrong one time was when he didn't burp the bottle enough. That means letting out some gas. He didn't do that, and things blew up in his face. If you ever decide to become a hooch master, then we suggest you get down with burping your brew. 8. After a study that was conducted about a giant Los Angeles jail, it was found that 800 people did 200 days in that jail before they were found innocent or guilty. 7. You might think that there's just no way you'd ever end up in jail, but listen how some people got there. Okay, so not paying a parking ticket can land you in jail, but it gets much worse than that. A few years ago, a 19-year-old man in Michigan did three days behind bars because he had not paid a fine for catching a fish. What? You're thinking? Well, we should tell you that he wasn't supposed to catch that kind of fish at that time of year. His crime was out-of-season fishing. We found an 82-year-old in Maryland whose beloved chihuahuas kept getting out of the house. How's an old woman supposed to keep those little things under control? She got fined, couldn't pay, and went straight to jail. She served two days. So don't think that you could never end up in jail. 6. In 2011, death row inmates in Texas no longer had the option to have a last meal before their execution. You might wonder why. The answer is because a senator in the state got quite upset when one prisoner ordered a massive meal and then ate none of it. The guy ordered two chicken fried steaks, some fried okra, about a pound of barbecue, three fajitas, a triple meat bacon cheeseburger, a meat lover's pizza, a cheese omelet with ground beef, tomatoes, onions, and bell and jalapeno peppers, and lastly, a pint of ice cream and a slab of peanut butter fudge with crushed peanuts. All of that came and the prisoner said he no longer felt hungry. That was enough to make some officials angry, and last meals became a thing of the past. 5. In 2007, a lady named Lucille Kepin was released from a U.S. prison, and it made the news. That's because she was the oldest female in the country before her release. The 93-year-old had served five years for shooting her neighbor. 4. In 1926, an Australian man named Bill Wallace shot a guy because that guy started smoking near Wallace. Smoking indoors was all the norm back then, but Bill didn't really like the smell. He went to prison and never came out again, but guess how old he was when he finally passed away within those walls? The answer is 107 and 11 months. He did a total of 63 years. 3. In 2019, at a prison in Arkansas, the officers were a bit embarrassed when a prisoner just seemed to disappear. Where is the guy, they wondered. One minute, he was there, and the next, just gone. A manhunt was soon underway, and those red-faced officers took dogs into a nearby rural area, knowing the guy couldn't have gotten far. They found him in the end, but not outside of the prison. He was found hiding on the roof. 2. 
You won't be surprised to hear that life ain't easy for some folks on death row. They sit in solitary confinement and just wait and wait until it's time to lay down on that gurney and take that toxic potion into their veins. The waiting can cause something called death row syndrome, which basically means they go mad. One guy who said death row was like living in a submarine or a cave had his execution delayed because he was in no fit state to die. Others might start talking to themselves or even have psychotic delusions. You can sure get low on death row. And number one. It's a rough estimate, but it's thought that 46,000 to 230,000 people in U.S. prisons are actually innocent. Since 1992, 20 people in the U.S. have been exonerated from death row because of DNA evidence. The records show that there have been 2,551 exonerations in America, and those guys in total did 22,540 years behind bars for something they didn't do. Now that might be the most insane fact we have for you. Are you hooked on facts? Do you want some more? If so, these shows will be a great education for you. Head on over to 50 Insane Fighter Jet Facts That Will Shock You or 50 Insane Facts About the Vietnam War You Didn't Know.